Oh, hi. Welcome back to science class. I hope everybody's being appropriate on the, uh, the chat. It is gaming time. What does that even mean? Your speech impediment. You misspelled speech. Oh, Chavez got you on that one. Nice. Okay. Anyway, enough about the speech. So, um, welcome back to science class, everybody. I uh, am Mr. Elson. Duh. And uh, I wanted to thank all of my awesome eighth graders. You guys have been great about participating online so far. So uh, keep that up. As the school year goes on, I hope to uh, keep the engaging, fun theme going with all this stuff. But I do at some point want to start ramping up the rigor. What that means is that there are science skills that you actually need to have uh, for, for next school year. So at some point, you do need to learn something. All right, so our schedule for today. First, we've got a few housekeeping items. Uh, by the way, hashtag eighth grade white. Today is Wednesday uh, Wrangler wear. Uh, Wilbur represent. All right, so um, after housekeeping stuff, we've got uh, an update on how to make homemade gasoline or corn to ethanol if you're scientific about it. We've got some at-home experiments we're going to be looking into, and then uh, we're going to discuss next week's science topic. And then finally, at the end, we're going to spin the science's wheel. All right, so any parents who are turning in, tuning in um, for uh, any homeschool tips, here's your very first tip. Um, ask an expert, not me. I'm not a... Uh, a homeschool parent. I'm a classroom teacher. Shout out to my cousin, Corey. So uh, my only tip really is passion projects. Find something that people are into and like they're going to be into it. I guarantee that there is reading, writing, definitely science and math involved in whatever you pick. So being able to keep up on this chat room. We'll get to the wheel later. You all chill out about the wheel. Okay, so the next thing I actually, while we're on the topic of the chat room, uh, so this may be the only time that we have the chat option. Um, there is an age restriction that requires um, chat rooms to be disabled. So um, if I set this video to be kid-friendly, then it disables the chat option. That's why I couldn't uh, activate it last time. And I am trying to keep this channel kid-friendly, so um, we'll see how the, this... Uh, hi, Xavier. We'll see how this whole um, chat room thing goes, but um, I got to look into whether or not I'm allowed to, to use that. All right. Uh, next, let's uh, start talking about homemade gasoline. So I have right here a strange liquid that may or may not uh, contain something flammable in it. I'm going to walk you through some of the steps real quick. This, of course, is not done. Um, this is, we're on, basically there's three parts. I've done number one and number two. Not, never mind. All right, so let me uh, show you what we've got so far. So down here is a bag of corn uh, mash. It's like, it's basically cornmeal. You can buy the same stuff at the store, make uh, some corn tortillas out of it or something like that, uh, corn muffins, so on and so forth. Anyway, we took that and we mixed it with yeast. This stuff's actually alive, living, and you take these little guys and you stick them inside the corn with a little few of these other chemicals around here, and they uh, eat. When the yeast eats corn or sugar, it starts to uh, give off alcohol. So 
I let the stuff set there for a while. Clean it up with this gross um, mesh. Let's see if I can show you a video of it. There will be a much better video eventually, and sorry if this is super laggy, but... Oh, I hit the wrong button. Genius. There we go. Is this good? No way it hasn't. Go get in. Okay, so now you need to scoop up the, uh, what's left in there and squeeze it in your hand. I can't, I can't, I can't. You're saying that's smelly? <laughs> Very. Wow. All right, so anyway, there'll be uh, detailed videos of that posted at some point. And uh, you can see the nasty stuff that smells. Then they had to take that and filter it to pull out all the corn. There's still a little bit of corn in here. Obviously, that's why it's got this weird yellowy milk look to it. Uh, so there's definitely still some corn in there. Uh, but it should mostly at this point be water and alcohol. So step number one was to feed yeast. Step number two is to remove the solids. Step number three is going to be removing the gas. So these big, expensive, fancy things that we had set up in our science classroom, it's called a distillery. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this stuff in there. We're going to boil it, but not at 100 degrees Celsius like water does. You have to boil it less than that. And so alcohol boils before water boils. So if we set this thing at a low, gentle boil, the alcohol should evaporate first. It goes down this tube here, condenses down this thing that's got cold water going into it, making it nice and cold, and then dripping out the bottom should be little drips of alcohol. So that's the theory. I'm going to try that out later on and then post a video of my attempts. All right, so... Oh, one last thing. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on this, and most of the people on YouTube do not use corn. They just use pure sugar. Turns out this thing's way easier. All you need is a cup of sugar and a little bit of this, and you can make it, supposedly. I've never tried it with sugar. I've done it with corn, so I'm going to be throwing in some sugar um, and trying to make the alcohol out of that, too. And then we will burn it. And I'll show you some awesome burning experiments to do with alcohol that you should not try at home. Okay, enough about ethanol. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Trayvon. I wonder if anybody else. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did number one and number two. Ha ha, I knew somebody would catch that. Okay, moving on. So um, at-home experiments tomorrow, Thursday, you guys have another assignment. And this time it's going to be you have to do a science experiment at home. So I decided to give you four options. That way, if you don't have the materials for some of the things, you can pick something else. So you have four options depending on your materials, time, and your interests. So you do all four of them if you want. You do just one. If you want to post a video of you doing them, all the better. Tomorrow's share your story anyway, so maybe that could be your story that you share. So I've got uh, some Google Slides called Pandemic Activities I'm going to share. I'll throw, I already emailed out a link to it, but I'm also going to put it on Google Classroom. And I guess I can share it on my other social media if somebody else wants to see it. And so you're going to get to do four of the activities, the first two of them have to do with candy, if you have candy at home, as well as the D word. Let's talk about the D word. So my students, they already know you shouldn't use bad words, which are words that cannot communicate well. The D word is a good example. So the word dissolve, that's what we're talking about. I don't know what D word you were thinking of, but I'm talking about the word dissolve. In our science class, we took sugar, and we mix it in with some water. So you take some sugar, you put it in here, you start mixing it up, and it vanishes. But of course, it's not gone, it's in there. You just can't see it. To be able to explain that is, is a little bit tricky though. So 
the sugar is able to break up in really small bits until you can't see it, yet it's still in there. It's just hidden amongst all the water particles. They're so small, you can't see them, but they're there. So that's the word dissolve. A lot of people think they know the word dissolve, but they don't. In fact, let's put that to the test. What if I put this in water? Is this going to dissolve? I think most of you already know the answer. Ah, oh, satisfying. So as you can see, there are two different uh, layers there. What if we stir it up? I need something to stir it with. Stir it up, that helps things dissolve, right? Get this oil all stirred up inside the water and... Yeah, it still looks the same. Except now it has weird little bubbles in it. So oil and water don't mix. Oil doesn't dissolve in water. Why? Why do some things dissolve in water and other things don't? Turns out this is all actually rather tricky. You need to know that water is a solvent. You need to know that sugar is a solute and that sugar water is a solution. So the reason I bring up the D word is because you have two experiments I'm going to have you try. The first one, one of my favorite ones, has another D word in it, density. You're going to try to make this. This is a science experiment we did in my classroom using Skittles. So you need a bag of Skittles to do this. If you don't have Skittles, you don't have access to Skittles, then find another experiment. It's called the density rainbow. If you look up my Google slides, there's a video of how to do it. We tried to do it yesterday and we did not do a very good job. It really just kind of looks like liquid vomit. You should also never drink your science experiments. Oh, that is gross. Yeah, seriously, don't. Don't drink your science experiments. Although it did kind of taste like liquid Skittles. But uh, my daughter's hands were on those Skittles, so I may be getting sick from something other than that other virus. So, density rainbow. It goes as simple as this. Use the same amount of water for five colors, but use different amounts of Skittles. So this bottom one had probably like 16 purple Skittles in there, whereas the red on the top had like two Skittles mixed in with it. You got to sit there and stir it and stir it and stir it until it's all dissolved. There goes the D word. You've got to dissolve the Skittles. If there's still little white balls floating around inside the stuff, those little white Skittles are sugar and you haven't dissolved it yet. You got to keep stirring. Try using warm water. That might help it dissolve. Anyway, so um, it's going to go basically like 16 or more Skittles, maybe even 20 Skittles. Then the green, you might have like 12 Skittles. Yellow, you could have like, I don't know, eight Skittles and then six Skittles and then two Skittles. So you, you want to make it to where each thing has its own amount of sugar in it, but use the same amount of water. If you use the same amount of water, sugar, then you have five different densities of sugar water. The, the most dense, the most sugary goes to the bottom. The least dense goes to the top. So good luck with that one. Skittles density rainbow. The next one also has to do with uh, density. Basically for this, you're going to need some uh, chocolate. Yeah, believe it or not, that's actually chocolate. So with this chocolate, you need two pieces that are about the same size. Hi, Luis. You've been posting on here, but I just thought I'd say hi. All right, so you take these two pieces of chocolate. The first one, you put it in your mouth, you chew it up, and you swallow it, timing how long it took you to eat this piece of chocolate. The second piece, that should be the exact same size, you're going to set that on your tongue. Do not use your teeth and see how long it takes to eat the same size piece of chocolate without using teeth. Your tongue will eventually 
dissolve, there's that D word again, the chocolate, but how much time will it take? So look into that. That's why it's important to stir your, um, your Skittles to get those to dissolve a little faster. You know, like your teeth are going to help stir up the chocolate. All right, so there's two fun little uh, dissolving experiments for you to try. The next one that I want you guys to try is called a centripetal or centrifugal pump. It looks like this. In order to do this, you're going to need a straw. You're going to need a little bit of tape. And you're going to need a stick. The stick needs to be straight. This one is a metal skewer. You could use a bamboo skewer or a really thin pen or pencil might also work. One of those things. Try that out. So you uh, take your straw. You mark it right in the middle. In the middle of the straw is where you're going to poke your stick. And then about a third of the way in both sides, you cut the straw so that you can bend it down. And you tape it like that. Then you need a shallow dish of water, but one that's a little bit wider than this. And you're going to set this thing down inside your dish of water. This is not water, but pretend like it is. And then you sit there and spin it around. I want you to watch the patterns inside the water. The water is going to make a beautiful pattern. For any parents watching right now, don't let them try this near electronics. Do not let a lot of electronics near, just in case they spill, you know? So um, anyway, you're going to try that out. It turns out that this is almost identical to what they put inside of vacuum cleaners. So vacuum cleaners basically sit there and spin this thing around, and they're able to move dust and air and such. So that's a centripetal pump. The fourth and last one, which I think a few of you might want to try, is called the Jackie Chan Coin Challenge. At least that's what the slow-mo guys on YouTube call it. To do this, you're going to need three coins. I'm using U.S. quarters, but any coins will do as long as you can find three of them. So you take your hand and you set three quarters, three coins on your hand like this. Then you throw them up in the air and try to catch them one at a time. You can't catch them all in one grip. So let's see if I can do it real quick. Ignore all my dirty dishes. So you set the three quarters down on your hand like this. I'm going to throw them up into the air. and I'm going to try and catch them without breaking my hand on a chair. All right, here we go. Three. Two, one. Oh, I captured two of them. Go watch the slow mo guys. They uh, have a video of them trying to attempt it. Two at one grab. That's cheating. Make a slow mo video of it if you get uh, really skilled at it. All right. Next topic is next week. So the science experiments for this week are fun and lighthearted. Next week, we're going to actually start getting into a real science topic. Fourth quarter, we were supposed to cover biology. So that's what we're going to start getting into is biology. Now, uh, this may be subject to change according to an email that I received a little bit ago. Stay tuned on that. But I plan on posting some pre-recorded videos on Google Classroom talking all about biology. And of course, I'll still do the weekly Wednesday YouTube lives. So the uh, lab, the labs and the assignments for biology are going through STEM scopes. And uh, if you've been looking at Google Classroom, I've talked a little bit about STEM scopes as well as in some emails. Uh, so eighth graders, you guys have access to that through the USD 259 portal. You log into that portal and you'll see STEM scopes as one of the little icons. Here is the biology topic we will start with. Biology. I'm sorry, that is, <laughs> that's the same word. The biology topic we're going to start with is reproduction. 
Go ahead and let that uh, set in with you guys. Well, the chat room got really quiet then. I say reproduction, and all of a sudden nobody says anything. So, uh, fun fact, you are quarantined right now with a stay-at-home ordinance simply because of one thing in science, and that is reproduction. Some organisms are better at making babies than others. COVID-19. You make enough babies, it spreads all over the world in a very quick record time. Everybody gets panicked and uh, locks themselves down in their, their rooms for the next two months. We'll see. So uh, reproduction, that's what we're going to be getting into. You guys will walk around. Your first lab will be to go walk around outside and start noticing the reproduction of plants and animals and humans are not included in that, so be careful with what you're looking at. So um, we'll talk more about uh, reproduction next week and in some of my pre-recorded videos. All right, so that's next week. We'll get into the real topic of biology. The next thing I needed to talk to you guys about is, um, as a science teacher, is about to announce they will open all Kansas schools up again starting next week. April Fools, just kidding. So, sorry, that was a lame April Fools uh, prank I had to pull on you there. I uh, have a much better April Fools prank I'd love to pull on you, but. Um, you need to be in my classroom to do it. So sorry about that. Maybe I can post a video of it. Uh, for those of you looking for an April Fool's prank, if your uh, parents live in the dark, you could go ahead and uh, make a broom stand on its side or stand straight up without any supports. Once you make your broom stand up, you go tell your parents that the planets have aligned and the gravity of the planets are able to pull the, the broom straight up. Most people have already seen that because it went through uh, social media. So here's your next best April Fool's prank. Same thing, planets are aligning. They're going to align today at 12.06. So go tell your parents, you gotta stand out in the front yard and at 12.06, not exactly 12.06, one second after 12.06, if you jump right when all the planets line up in the sky, all those planets will pull you up by just a little bit. You'll get like an extra few inches where you feel like all the all this weight lifted off of you at 12.06, one second after that. So you go tell your parents that, have everybody stand outside, and uh, 12.05, do a countdown. One second after 12.06, everybody jumps in the air, and you laugh at them all looking like idiots because the planets align all the time, and it doesn't do anything different to Earth. So... April Fools. All right. I think it's time, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the science is wheel. Last week we landed on clean room. No, it is no longer on here. So uh, hopefully uh, you all went and cleaned your rooms. For those of you who have not been uh, keeping up on this, uh, here are the things. I'm not going to explain them very well, but uh, we'll go around the wheel real quick in case you didn't get to watch last week. All right, so we've got, starting here, science memes. We've got current event. That's a bad one. If you land on that, you've got homework. you got to go post a current event on Google Classroom. TikTok. That means Mr. Elson will start his own TikTok account. Hopefully I never land on that one. Electrify Elson. I've got what's called a shock potato that's apparently going to electrify me. Right next to that is no electricity. If we land on that, you and me will have to go one hour with no electronics. So we'll probably start it right after lunch. Like I would say, go eat something real quick. And then as soon as you're done eating, like 1145, boom, start your, your one hour. And at uh, 1245, you can have your electronics back. Of course, this is based on the trust system, but I mean, you're bored, you're sitting at home, you have nothing better to do than a nice electricity challenge. Most people are doing a 24-hour challenge. All you got to do is a one-hour challenge. Hashtag, let's move on. 
Next is a random experiment. I've got plenty of those sitting around this house. So I'll probably leave that one on the wheel, um, even if we do land on it. Next is spicy RxN. Speaking of chemistry, that means reaction, spicy reaction. I'll make a reaction video of me eating some extremely spicy stuff. If you've ever heard of uh, Hot Ones, First We Feast, I bought all of their um, super spicy stuff. And I'll let you watch me cry as I eat hot things. I am not a fan of spicy food, just so you know. Here's the new one, video game stream. If we land on that, I will indeed uh, stream myself playing a video game. Probably not for 24 hours, uh, but we'll do a little video game stream. I'll even let you guys vote. I'll give you some options of which games I've got. And you pick which uh, video game you want me to stream. All right, next is Free Friday. This one's pretty lame. The first skill I want to teach you all if we land on learn a new skill is how to tie a tie. I'll show you guys how to tie a tie if we land on that. Then we've got the super boring nothing. If you land on that, you get nothing. Right next to it is Embarrass Elson. You get to take a vote. Do you want to uh, watch me paint my nails? Yes, I will paint my fingernails live. Uh, do you want me to dance? Sure hope nobody votes on that one. Or do you want me to go jump on a trampoline and make a video of that? Either way, they're all stupid and ridiculous, and I hope that it never lands on that one. All right, so those are our options. It's time for us to spin the wheel. I'm going to read through all your guys' comments real quick, see what all I've missed, because it's hard to read your comments and uh, go through all the stuff I need to go through at the same time. Plastic babies. That would have been, uh, Izzy, that would have been a really good um, April Fool's prank. Hashtag let's move on. Nice. If you create a TikTok, I will shave my head and become a monk in the Appalachian Mountains. Careful what you uh, wish for, Jamie. You have nice, long, beautiful hair that's taking you forever to grow. I don't think you need to shave that off. You can go move out to the Appalachian Mountains, though. Minecraft. Why does everybody want me to, to stream Minecraft? I want to see a nail video. Where is sausage? Well, how are we going to play sausage? Like, we could try and do it on a Zoom, but you have to be able to see everybody's faces to know if they laugh or not. So sausage is is a game, and whoever posted something after that, no. The answer is no. I will give you my gaming computer personally if you start gaming. I already do game. You're talking about gaming like right now? All right, let's spin this wheel. All right, first we got to randomly pick who's going to get to spin it. It looks like the random selection is me because none of you are here. Here we go. <laughs> I should just cheat right now and make it land on something that I want it to land on. Oh, so close to embarrass Elson, but so far away. Ladies and gentlemen, we landed on science memes. You've got a job to do today. Over the next 24 hours, I need you to post somewhere. Google Classroom, Flipgrid, don't really care where. I'll probably put mine on Google Classroom. Show me your favorite science memes. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you all are staying uh, happy and healthy where you're at. I know that this uh, can be a very boring time. Go try out tomorrow one of those four uh, at-home activities. I'm going to try and continue to throw as many science lessons as I can at you so that if you get bored, you can go try some kind of uh, an experiment at some point. All right, guys. Any last-minute comments before I make you uh, stop the chat room? And go come up with a science meme. Can we make a meme? That's a good question. Yeah, of course. I'm all, I'm all right with that. If you don't uh, like the memes out there, go find your own. Hi, Mr. Elson. Hi, Random Red. Can they be kind of dark? 
you, you got to keep it school appropriate, but if they, they're a little bit dark, that's fine. Hi, Isaac. I'm going to steal all of Sam's science memes. Send a couple my way. I have 100 subscribers now. Oh, great. Thanks, Emma. 